Yeah, this is Bang Bang Ray Hall. Please like and subscribe. Yeah, um, I remember years ago, yeah, um, as kids, I had about four mates uh, with me. And uh, do you know, like, it's like, a, like 11, 10, 11 years of age. You're, you're a bit, I don't forget, I've been sexually assaulted as a child twice. And so, well, nearly three times, really. Uh, the old man tried to keep touching me up. And uh, we went in the house and uh, burgled his house and bashed him up and nicked everything off him, yeah. Only like coins, ten, I think it was one ten pound note, a lot of two, six, two and six, uh, half a crowns and all them sort of things, yeah. But, uh, we, you know, we thought, God, it's not a bad little thing. And then we go to Acton Park as kids, as a, you know, and, and and get hold of old men who, who, who want to touch us up and things like that and uh, bash him up in the park and nick all their money and all that. And we was like a little gang, you know what I mean? Like a little gang. It was, it was terrible, really. It was, uh, but all like young kids and really I say um, most of them must have been like me I don't think most of them, they've gone through what I went through as, as, as a child has been sexually assaulted but a lot of them have been assaulted uh, by by their stepdads or whatever you know so we were all very close together and uh, then you get put away you know ball stalls and all this that and the other and the one of them in particular Leslie my, my mate the black guy loved him to death mate me and him were so close yeah and uh, we used to fight, we used to fight all the time, train all the time, me and him together. We used to train more than the others, the others would like, leave it out, me and Leslie was really close. Train, train, train all the time. Lots of sparring, school, bashing up people, but wasn't it really at school? I, I wasn't, he was. I mean, his mum was, um, you know, she wouldn't stand for that, mate. And his dad, and he wouldn't stand for that, he had to go to school. And Gemma, his elder sister, she'd grass him right up. <laughs> if he wasn't at school, she'd grass him right up. So Leslie had to go to school. Me, not me, mate. I didn't like it at all. My, even though my mum worked there, you know, she was in the canteen, uh, school dinners, but she used to make some good school dinners, my mum. And she used to spoil me, you know what I mean? But give me the better. Um, even when I was at school, give me the better food. But I wasn't at the school as much at all. You know, I hated, it. I hated school. He didn't do me no favours. All I liked was money. I didn't want to count. I didn't want to write about money. I just wanted to have it in my hands. Yeah. So things got worse. Anyway, um, we was talking uh, the other day about when I worked at Lucky's. Lucky's. Anybody remember Lucky's at Ealing? And uh, I mean, we had some good times there. Uh, me and Dominic McCoy. Dominic, I like Dominic. I mean, Dominic had it so good in there. I mean, you know. I mean, we also had quite a few fights. I was involved with lots of fights in uh, Lucky's and uh, I loved it. You know, I loved it because I knew as I hit them on the gym, mate, they're gone, you know what I mean? And I used to go crazy, go through the club, knock people out all day long. And, and there was a guy called Steve, I think his name is Steve or Billy. Billy, I think, and uh, he was a bodybuilder. He had these massive, massive legs and what a good looking guy, you know what I mean? Really good looking. And all the birds loved him, mate. The birds, his legs, they loved his big legs he had, you know what I mean? I suppose they're thinking big legs, you know what I mean? Anyway, so me and Bill uh, used to stick together. Uh, I don't remember me and Bill, yeah. We used to stick together and uh, me and Bill had quite a few fights in it. And I remember that time me and Bill had a fight outside with these guys in the army barracks. And uh, we bashed them right up, yeah. We really bashed them up, me and Bill. And one got away and I think one clicked Bill when he ran the year. And he ran, mate. But uh, Bill was like a whippet on them legs, mate. He was couldn't, couldn't just... He, got, he pulled he pulled the guy back by his hair, you know, because in them days it was long hair. He pulled him back by his hair, and uh, the guy got bashed up something terrible, really, really bad, uh, you know. And then I loved the job, you know. And uh, one day I was, I mean, I used to always go suited, or suited and booted, as they call it in them days. Suited and booted, always looked smart, always had a tie, shirt and tie, always, 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 always. And it's really looked good, you're crisp, yeah? Long hair, crisp. And uh, one day we was in there, there was a big fight in there. And I got involved with a fight, a really, really bad one it was. And um, this guy came up to me after. He said, you're interested in a job? I went, yeah, yeah, go whatever. And he got me a job. I've already said it a long time ago. He got me a job, uh, but this is building up to what I was going to tell you. He got me a job with King Farhad from the Arab Emirates. I worked there, I worked there as a bodyguard for, for King Fahad and all his women, his wives and all, the, all, all everyone, everyone in the house. 
It was right by Richmond Park in Hamgate. It was massive, mate. Massive. And uh, we made sure that everybody was safe. But they had about, I think they had about three uh, special forces in there with guns that used to go around with them anywhere they went, the kids went, they'd go. And, and, and some, of them, some of them girls, um, they were like 14, 15, maybe even younger than that. And they were princesses. And that, that, I mean, they was like, they could get married at 12 to these Arabs, you know, and they were absolutely stunning young kids, yeah, playing, playing in the garden and bits and pieces like that. And my job, I used to walk around with the Dobermans, these big Dobermans with cut ears, massive, mate, they were massive. There was two Dobermans, they was absolutely massive. That the way, what, 12 stone? That's big for a, a, a Doberman, massive. And they was very vicious, you know. I used to put muzzles on them when I walked around, when I walked around with, the, uh, with the Queen. And uh, she had the axe mac on and she was a big fat woman. And uh, I used to walk with her and, and, and all the other servants behind her used to run. If you, they used to run for respect. You couldn't walk, you had to run with, next to her, yeah? A rap, a back from her and she's going, <laughs> to me, she didn't want me in there with the kid, with, with the Dobermans. She wanted me to go away. But I had to stay there with the Dobermans. I mean, and they had this great big lake in there, like a lake, and they had this great big coil of carp in there, and um, quite cute, just get the herring guys come down and stab the coil of carp. Mate, and they'd be there two days later put more coil, more coil of carp in, even though they had this wire on top of it, the coil, the, 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 the herring guys would still come in and do the wire and do the, and do the, uh, do the carp. I don't know why, because they couldn't get them out, you know, but anyway, um, I love my job, mate. I love this song. Yeah, the best food ever. He gets best food ever. And it always make me laugh, you know, as the kids. These young shakers and shakes, they used to play football at, in where the where the where the car park is massive, massive car, not in the grass at the back. They want to be round all the cars. And you see him playing football and smashing these balls right, up against these Bentleys and rollers and Ferraris and all these <laughs> sorts of cars. And you can see these these uh, these chauffeurs cringing, cringing, you know what I mean? Because they're smashing the car up, you know? And they get right into trouble for it, you know? But um, anyway, you know, then I used to see security car coming in there twice, three times a day with big bags of money. They used to go out and spend fortunes, these, people, these kids. They used to go to all the foot parks and all that and spend loads of money in Harvard's, Selfridges, Fortunes. I mean, I picked them up from from Heathrow Airport when I got the job, and they went to Heathrow Airport in the Arab Emirates. Uh, big, uh, big four was it? I think it was a four hundred four or whatever it was. It was a massive seven hundred four, seven seven forty. A big, big plane, yeah, massive jumbo, big jumbo jet up and down, yeah. And we like like picked them up. I mean, picked them up in rollers, all sorts of cars. Very, very unbelievable. He never come. Uh, King Fahad never come. He comes by a special plane uh, to, uh, to um, Norfolk Airport. Special plane, special gunned up. That's the airport that all go gunned up at uh, Norfolk. And uh, he, he come there and he was, and when, he, when he went, it was all the fucking, all sorts of cars, police side, riders, vans, uh, uh, motorbikes, everything, you know. And I see him, I see him once um, when I was working there come once and these special force guys these special forces guys was at the front uh, they had these hand guns but they looked like some sort of Uzi hand gun and they was at the front with the old bill they had bill had guns and uh, these these got SAS was all properly proper guns up and everything you know and then you see them come in and they shut the gate for you and we wasn't allowed we had to stay back because uh, they thought we might, we might want to be one of the people who's going to shoot him but he had a lift he had a lift, he had his bus of drink, yeah, but he had a lift put in, put in his, uh, this big, pl massive place, mate, he had a lift put in from the, from the ground floor to, to his bedroom, but, the, uh, and he had the bar at the bottom, and I used to get drunk every night, paralytic drunk, get in the lift, and just fall in the lift, and get out the other end, and they'd pull it, put him along, undress him, put him in all his bedroom stuff, and put him in the bed. Wasn't supposed to drink, <laughs> wasn't supposed to drink. And one of the girls, uh, one of the princesses there, she was about 18, she was stunning, mate. She was like something you've never known, but she was black, long black. She was just a picture. 
Uh, she got involved with one of the bodyguards. Uh, I don't think it's SA, one of the SAS Special Forces guy. She, but she got involved with one of the bodyguards. And um, they caught her uh, with one of the bodyguards. The bodyguard guy, don't know what happened to him, mate. I never see him again. He just disappeared. He just dis disappeared from the planet. <laughs> I don't know what happened to him. They more like took him away somewhere. Uh, she was took to uh, a big old tool the back of uh, the back of Howard's, and uh, she was punished uh, where she where she could uh, give her just give her money, and she'd be go with two bodyguards, and she could do what she liked, just spend what she liked, but she couldn't go out at night time. That's a punishment. <laughs> Get as much money as she likes, go in hours with the bodyguards, but she wasn't allowed out at night time. Ain't a bad punishment, is it? <laughs> you know what our mum and dad would have done? And they go, oh, what? Anyway, so uh, the, 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 the job, I love the job. I love the job. But anyway, before I got the sack, um, there was one special unit guy, uh, SAS guy. He was a bit flashy. He had this thing like a bolt, yeah? Like a long, like a long bolt with two nuts on the end. And it was hard and still. But his nuts was done, they're all cut and done properly, yeah? And he was showing me that they used to hold it in their hand like that. And they had one nut there and one nut, one nut at the top. And they'd hit you in the elbows, anywhere in the chest, and all that, and things like that. And, uh, you, you, I mean, he'd done it a few times for me. God, what, you couldn't, I mean, so much pain. And they were so good, these, these people, at it, yeah? Boss, 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 that's one each hand. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like weapons, yeah? Special weapons. And it was a bit flesh. And I was like pff, a young fighter, boxing myself, going down to pro gyms and all that, and I wasn't really interested in what he was doing and showing me, he's a couple of times of it, he's hit me on the elbow and, and the legs, pain, absolutely painful mate, and he was one of them guys that knew what he was, special forces, gunned up, knew how to handle himself, that was a bully, he was a bit of a bully, well when I say bit, he was a bully, you know what I mean, he was a hawk man, and anyway, one day he, he come in and uh, he got a bit there with one of my mates. Uh, well, this guy, this guy was security. I mean, he, he, really, he, he, a nice, nice guy. They didn't say nothing. So no one, he kind of bossed you on the arm and this, that and the other. And the guy was in pain. And I said, why don't you behave yourself, mate? You're special forces. We all know what you are. We all know you carry guns and you've got these things. Just behave yourself. You ain't got proof to no one. He came over to me, he went, listen, if I was you, I'll keep your mouth shut, mate. He said, because, like, you know what happens, don't you, people like you? He said, um, do we get away with it and nothing will happen? Do you know what I mean? I went, okay, mate. Go on, Tunch. He went, listen, see this, you come, bop, you hit me on the elbow with this thing. I'm like, crack! I hit, him with his, I hit him with his left hook, mate. I swear to God. I swear to God. His feet come off the floor about half inch. He flew. Oh, bang! We left up, mate. Now, now, I thought to myself, I don't want to go over the top of this. I don't want to jump on him and start bashing and bashing him, what you would do, because leave it at that. You know what I mean? That's enough for yeah? you. And uh, anyway, he got up. Not straight away. He was on the floor. He got up. He came over to me. Do you know what, mate? Respect for this guy. He came over to me. He was a bully. He said, do you know what, Ray? Put it there, mate. He said, put it in, mate, respect for you, mate, for doing that. He says, fucking hell, you see, he said, you can have it. <laughs> he said, why didn't you ever do the special forces? Why didn't you do that? I said, well, mate, prison. You know, young kid, prison, white peas, ball stools, and all that, you know what I mean? I've been in prison uh, a lot of my, my life. And, uh, you know, this is much up. Uh, he said, mate, he says, you'd have been the bollocks. He said, you'd have been good. He said, I never see that coming. He said, and I'm telling you that, I've trained to see that coming. You know what I mean? That's what we do. And the respect to you. And the guys come over, his other two pals come over. He shook my hand. I thought, fuck me, mate, I'm going to get killed here. You don't want this, Bob. They're going to take, because outside the house is all these woods, yeah? By ham. Yeah, all these loads of woods. And I thought they're going to get me out there and I can pop, pop one of me nut. But they didn't. It was really, really nice, yeah? Uh, and praised me for what it was and the way it was. And it kept saying to me, mate, you, sh you should do that. Special forces. You know, coming is something that you could do, you know. 